All right, Gadgeteers, welcome back. So yesterday's video, the sound was pretty bad, even though I was using the lavalier mic that usually works really well for me. So I don't know what was going on there, but I'm in the studio now. So hopefully sound will be much, much better. As you know, I was talking about some technology that I was gonna go ahead and buy that I could use in the studio that would definitely enhance things for me. I'm gonna show that to you right now and show you what I plan on doing with it and why it's going to help so much. All right, so the technology I actually went and purchased, I got off of Craigslist. So I actually needed one of these and I was looking around and this wasn't a specific one that I was looking at, but this particular range extender for Wi-Fi was what I was in the market for. Now, ironically, uh, this particular one here showed up on Craigslist. Now, if you're in a big city and you use Craigslist, it's very common to see stuff like this all the time. But where I live in Michigan, it's extremely rare. We have a section in Craigslist, everybody does, called Computer Parts and you simply won't see stuff like this very often. So when it came up, I was really happy. So this is an AC1900 Wi-Fi range extender, and this unit does use uh, 600 megabits and 1300 megabits using dual band, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi. 700 milliwatt high power has gigabit ports on the back, which I really needed. It says it's easy to extend and easy setup. Well, I'm gonna tell you what happened yesterday and you decide whether or not it's easy. So the whole idea with this product is it basically will take your network, which may not have enough range, and extend it so that you can get better Wi-Fi connectivity in parts of your house where normally you would have a low power, low connection, or no connection at all. And this one does support, let's see, AC1900 supports G, B, A, and N. I don't know if you can see that. It makes claims of 600 megabits and 1300 megabits. I have not tested that yet and based on this the wireless range is really good so the product supposedly is supposed to be the best one five gigabit ports which i needed so aside from extending the range there were a couple other things i needed to do so i have here my pentium 166 retro system now in my linux system back in my other room I have created a Samba share and I have everything on there. Well, if I put a network card in this and get it hooked up, I can then transfer data back and forth between this system and my Samba share because Samba will support basically anything, including Windows 98 or uh, another project I'm working on, Windows for Workgroups 311 or even DOS. So this is a computer that I'm currently working on. The plan here is to put a sound card inside this. It already has a network card. That's why it's open right now, because I've got to get the sound card in there. But this is a standalone, uh, all-in-one system with a small TFT screen on it, which I will be doing a video probably within the next week. So keep an eye out for that. And then I have my AMD K6. No. <laughs> Not a K6, I haven't had a K6 in a while. I used to have a K6 2450, but this is a Phenom 2 X6. So it's the six core, it is the 1055T. And you can see I drilled some holes here in the front panels. I put some extra fans in there. I've got a large fan in there. I've got a large one down there and one in the back so I can overclock it. I really don't need to overclock it anymore. I'll probably take it down back to normal clocking because I've got a couple of one gigabyte dims I'm gonna put in. These are DDR3, and they really don't go as fast as the dim that's in there right now, which is eight gigabytes. So the cool thing is I've got all these systems, right? And they all have network cards. Well, I didn't wanna to have to run cables all the way across the house. 
which is where the range extender comes in. So if you look right now, you can see that power is connected. It has Wi-Fi wi available. LED here indicates that it is connected to my main router in the house. Any regular device, say a cell phone, a computer, that's Wi-Fi, if it was in this room right now, the connection would be, it's okay. You know, two to three bars out of five, so about half as good as it should be. Well, what I'm gonna use this unit for is to go ahead and be able to plug in all the computers I have in this room so that I can get a wired connection. I also have over on the desk over here, and don't mind the mess. Once again, I'm under construction in this room. I've got my wife's MacBook, MacBook. Boy, I'm really out of it today. Over here, I've got my wife's iMac, which uses Wi-Fi. And now that I have the range extender in place, I've got a good connection. Now, the range extender and the Wi-Fi unit, looks like I hit the power cable there. Yep, I did, the power cable came out. When that light is blue, it indicates that it has 100% connectivity. So, the transmitter and receiver on this unit, of course, is far better than any cell phone or computer is going to be. And the transmitter and receiver on the actual router in the other room, of course, are excellent. So I have a Linksys in the other room, an EA6900, I believe. So with these two units, I can get Wi-Fi here in the room and I can get Wi-Fi for any computers that I put in this room and I don't have to have wires running all over. Now, right outside, if we go and look out the window here, you can't really see it. Uh, you can see it a little bit. See if we can get a better image. So right outside here is my deck. And when I'm out on that deck, I cannot get a good connection whatsoever. It really is somewhat of a pain in the butt. So with this piece of equipment, now I'm gonna be able to get a good solid connection using Wi-Fi when I'm on the deck. So how was it setting this unit up? Well, I'm gonna pull out the instructions and I'll show you. Okay, so looking at the instructions here, basically all I had to do was power on the unit and over here uh, on my home router, the one I already have set up, I click the WPS button and then on this router here, see if I can do this without unplugging it again, there is a button back here see if you can see it here the button that says re under it it's a very small button uh, that particular button when you press it after pressing wps on your wi-fi router of course does the connection now i didn't really believe this was going to work at all that's been my experience with this kind of stuff but shock of all shocks it actually worked of course, the person that I bought this unit from had already reset the unit. So, over here, everything auto-connected. Now, there's two problems with that. Yes, everything connected just fine to my router, and I got the blue light on the right-hand side, which indicates a 100% signal between the two units, the two Wi-Fi units. But there's two things you really have to be very careful about, and they don't bother to tell you that on this side of the page. And they do say this one's option two, but it is the easiest. So go through all of this. You need to flip over here and go to configure which is step three on the front of the page because as i'm sure you can guess the login is admin and the password is admin and it does not change of course when you use the uh, wps or the wireless protected setup feature of your router so you have to change the password and the other thing that you have to watch out for is that by default the unit uh, for the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection 
becomes a single merged connection, which is really cool. So basically your computer will find and locate the best connection. So in my case, mine is called Electric Eye 3, and the 2.4 gigahertz connection, whether it's here, whether I connect on this one or the router in the other room, your computer will choose the best one to connect to. Unfortunately, that isn't true with the five gigahertz connection. So, and there's no way to set it up so that it's combined. I don't know why it might be a technology issue or a limitation of the five gigahertz connection. So here's the problem. It actually gives you the name of your five gigahertz connection. So you have two Wi-Fi connections that have the same name. In my case, it was electric I3 underscore five GHZ for five gigahertz. Well, the problem with that is, of course, you don't know which one's which, right? So how did I find out? Well, using this URL right here, if you try to log in to the Wi-Fi extender and you're on the wrong network, it'll say there was a problem. You'll get a uh, web screen that says there was a problem. So all you do is switch to the other Wi-Fi connection for five gigahertz and try again. And then if you can log into the extender's administrative page, you know you're on the right one. And you log in and simply change the name. So I changed mine to Electric I3 with a capital EX underscore five gigahertz. So that way I know basically uh, which particular Wi Fi router that I'm on. So a little bit later, I went into the TP Link Repeater.net web interface for the extender. Now the trick here is you, in order to be able to use this URL you do need to be connected to the Wi-Fi unit. So in this case I am connected right now. Originally it would only say Electric I3 so it was sharing the SSID identifier and you did not have to choose which one you were connected to. You can see here that I did decide to go ahead and give the 2.4 gigahertz connection a unique name and I gave the 5 gigahertz connection a unique name. Now if I use the copy host SSID it will share this name with my actual Wi-Fi router the Linksys EA6900 but when I do this one here, it does not. And if I manually type in the name and hit save, it fails. Now, I could have just left this as a shared SSID uh, name. The problem is I noticed that when I was here in the front bedroom where my main editing computer is, I was on my cell phone and I was watching some videos and I was having some buffering and connection issues and my suspicion was there's really no way to know is I was actually connected to the extender all the way on the other side of the house but because they share the same SSID name there really was no way to know so I've decided for the time being to give each unit um, their own exclusive name so if I go back down here this is these two units here are my original Linksys EA6900 and the EX indicates that it's the extender so when I go out onto the deck I can easily connect to either 2.4 or 5 gigahertz either one works just fine so it is working um, I was kinda hoping that it would intelligently between the two routers be able to switch back and forth. The problem may be that both of the units were manufactured by a different company and therefore they don't work perfectly together but with the manual connection they do work really quite well. So I'm just gonna leave it like this for the time being. So this unit's really gonna help me out. I'm pretty excited about it and it's definitely gonna give me a lot more latitude to get all of my systems plugged in and set up on my network without having to run a whole bunch of cable. It makes my life a lot easier. 
So stay tuned, pretty soon I'm gonna have a video on the portable 486DX266, but coming even sooner, what I'm gonna work on next is setting this system up down here, my uh, AMD Phenom 2X6, for testing for Linux. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my TV slash monitor that I bought for $49 from Best Buy when it was on sale up here. Get me my Wi-Fi. I have a wireless keyboard and mouse, not Wi-Fi. Wireless keyboard and mouse set up here, and I'll have a monitor for the retro system and then a proper 1080p for my Linux testing system. And it'll also be a nice backup for me, just in case I have to come over here and do some rendering on the fly. All right, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you get a chance, drop a like and subscribe if you liked it. Also, drop a comment. I always appreciate hearing your comments. And I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.